Hi all and welcome to another quick Hackintosh video. In this video I'm going to show you how to use a piece of software called TNU to create a USB drive. This would actually work for a Rail Mac and will also work for a Hackintosh. Now this video is going to end up in maybe five parts, maybe more. Not to actually make the USB installer, but to give you tips and tricks on how to get your Hackintosh going and what a kex file is and what an efi folder is and what a config.plist is now by any means i'm not um i won't say that i'm a professional but i have been using hackintoshes now for six years seven years and i'd say that i'm getting quite good now and i understand how things work but i've decided to use this app because it creates what you call a vanilla installer now we will talk about this more in other videos when i discuss things like Intel QuickSync and other ways to get your Hackintosh to work. Anyway, without further ado, we need to download Mac OS X into the Applications folder. I've now, if we just go to my Applications folder, I've got Mac OS X Mojave 10.14.1, which came out only a few days ago, and the TNU installer is in beta at the minute, but it still works. So we've got the application, we've got a USB drive put into the Mac. Um, I will tell you now, I've got TNU installer on the USB drive. Like an idiot, I just tried to run it. And of course, when it tried to unmount the drive to make the installer, it's not going to unmount because TNU was running from the USB drive. So don't try run it from the USB drive. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to open the TNU installer. I'm going to hit allow. And basically it's telling me I need a Mac OS X version from the App Store, which I've already got. And I need a thumb drive of 8 gig or higher. If I hit next and hit I've read, agree. I'm going to select my USB drive and hit next. It's now looking for the Mac OS X installer, which is in my applications folder, which we need. Um, now I'm just going to go into these advanced options here in a minute. These are are advanced options exactly what they say but some of these don't work this one here i wished it did work um what this will do it will my efi folder is on my desktop and i will say before i go any further that that efi folder is off my work in hackintosh and the other day before i created the usb drive i i updated my mac os x I updated my Clover. I then copied the EFI folder onto my desktop inside this folder. So it's got the latest Clover installed on the EFI partition. So what we can, so basically that's what this is going to do. If we now go to open folder and I'll go to my desktop and I'll go to latest EFI, select it and it open. Now at the minute we're getting an error. The guy who made this installer knows about this. He's in talks with another guy, which I'll link his YouTube channel in the description. Um, and they're going to sort it out between themselves. And they're also going to do some videos to help the Wackintoshers into the market. So without further ado, it's added. So we can't do it. But if it was working and that did open this folder on my desktop, it would create the USB installer, get to the end and it'd be done. That'd be the end of that. It'd just work. And we won't need to mess around with Clover. We don't need to copy here. We don't need to mount the EFI partition. And we don't need to do what I'm going to do in this video. I'm actually going to do it in this video. But you won't need to do it. But for now you do. So we're going to hit recommended default options. It's going to use install Mac OS X Mojave. And it's going to put it to my USB drive. I'm going to hit next. Put in my password. Now... You, this will also format the USB drive and prep it all and do all the work for me. When it's done, because that setting's not working to install the EFI folder, it'll be ready for a real Mac. I'll just press 1. It'll be ready for a real Mac. So if you're using a real Mac, when this completes in 5 or 10 minutes, it'll be complete. You can just take the USB stick out. Of course, if you're going to use a Hackintosh, you need an EFI folder. Uh, and you need Clover installing, so you need to do the next stage, which I'll show you when this is complete. Right, well, that's just going ahead. I want to talk to you about, quickly while it's creating, about a setting 
what I've read numerous times on numerous forums about Intel QuickSync. On most forums, people tell you to disable your onboard Intel HD graphics. Now, I'm just going to show you for two minutes. If we look here under, this is a free piece of software, by the way, so you can download it to make sure your QuickSync's going to work. I'm using an RX Radeon 580. I recommend you use that if you're quite an high-end Final Cut Pro user. If you're not, you can use an RX 560, which works in the self-same manner uh, to get it going. Well, basically, they pretty much work out of the box, but you need a whatever green dot text. I also use the Lilu as well, and these just work fantastic. This is a budget version, but I tell you now, it does perform fantastic. I couldn't believe how well it actually did perform over my GTX 980 Ti for Final Cut. This absolutely whooped its ass, and it was only 120 quid or something like that. Anyway, so that, that tells you now I've got Intel HD 4600 graphics, and I've got a Radeon RX 580 GPU. I will tell you that I've got an Intel i7, we'll go here, look, I'll show you. We've got an i7 4790K, so it's actually quite an older version CPU, but it will work with newer, newer i7s. Um, so don't worry about that. And we've also got a piece of software called MacX Video Converter. This is free, and you can see, if I click on this little I here, it says, Hardware Encoding Supported, yes, Intel HD Graphics 4600. Now, I'm going to go into this a lot more later, so I don't want to go into it too much now. But if I, I can actually turn it on and off as well. If I didn't have QuickSync enabled, and my onboard graphics on, that's greyed out and you can't do what about it. I will tell you, if I grab an AVI file and drop it into here, and I hit convert, or without quick sync enabled, all my fans fire up on my PC, it starts working, CPU maxes out at 100%, my PC becomes sticky, and it takes ages. If I re-enable my onboard CPU, make sure quick sync is working, which I will show you to do in another video, Turn this back on, I drag the AVI file back in, do the self same thing, self same settings. My CPU's hardly doing any work, my fans are quiet on my computer, and it absolutely annihilates the conversion. It really, really is chalk and cheese. I'm also going to show you one other document. We won't let this video go on for too long. And I'm just going to talk to you about this project here. This basically, I'm a YouTuber and I do video tutorials on Final Cut, uh, photography, reviews. I do all sorts, so please subscribe if, if you want to. I won't beg you, but if you want, you can. And this is one of my latest uh, videos that I did. It's a 1080p from a Canon EOS 80D, and it's nearly 15 minutes long. Right, so I'm just going to... If I go to File, Share, Apple Devices, 1080p, go away, and we choose... It, and basically, H2 faster encode. That is the setting in uh, Final Cut that uses your Intel QuickSync. If you haven't got Intel QuickSync enabled, this won't do anything. It won't do what I'm going to sh show you now. So I'll just minimise this, and I'll tell you to export that project that you've just seen, which is nearly 15 minutes long, with QuickSync enabled, it took 2 minutes and 30 seconds. 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Without QuickSync enabled, with the onboard GPU disabled, it took 12 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, I'll just show you one more setting. And basically on this, I'm just going to show you these effects here. See the effects on and off? All this project has got effects on it. Nothing major, but it's got effects on it. Now, if I choose the project Window Light Photography and I go File, Delete Generated Files and tick all these, I'm not going to do it, and delete them all, it means that it gets rid of all the render files that Final Cut has done. If I then tell Final Cut not to export, just to render those effects back on, so it's got to remake the render files, with no quick sync enabled, I get 4 minutes and 5 seconds. If I restart the computer, to en enable me onboard graphics, my quick sync's now working again, get back into Final Cut, select the project, delete the render files, redo them, I get 2 minutes and 35 seconds, guys. 2 minutes and 35 seconds. That is unreal. And just before I go, let's break this down into a bit more of a better figure. If my project was to take an hour to export with Intel QuickSync, it would take 5 hours without QuickSync. 
why would you want to disable your onboard GPU? Do not disable your onboard GPU, especially if you are able to get it working with Intel QuickSync. There's just, you're absolutely crazy not writing Ed to disable that speed increase. For those of you who do, know, who do not know me, if you want, I'll do you a video and prove it. If you think that maybe I'm lying to you or something like that, I can actually do a video and show you it in real life. Um, let's just see what this installer is doing. So what, what we'll do with this installer, uh, oh, I think it's done it now anyway. Basically what this installer is going to do now when it's finished, I mean, you've seen it with it already done. It also makes you a nice icon on the drive, which you can see it's there. Usually yours will be just a white icon when you set off installing it. And it also going to put me a copy of TNU on the USB drive. Now don't forget, don't try make a TNU installer with the TNU installer on your ad on your USB drive. Because when it gets to the part where it needs to unmount it, you're going to have no, you're going to have basically it'll fail. So don't do that. You see how it's automatically put me the TNU installer on the drive. So if I now try reopen this and create the USB installer again, when it comes to unmount it on my Mac, it's going to error and it won't create the installer. So you must, if you wanted to use this again now, drag it out to your desktop and then double click on it and create your installer again. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you now. We want a piece of software called Clover Configurator. Right, so we're now just going to mount the EFI partition and we're going to install the EFI folder. There's a couple of EFI mounters out there, but I recommend you download Clover Configurator because it also does to do your config.plist at a later date if you haven't got one. I will show you how to do that on a different video, but of course this is just showing you how to create the installer. So if we just go to mount EFI and we mount the Mac OS X Mojave, which is the USB, the EFI partition. We've now got an EFI partition. If we now go to my EFI folder, which I'm assuming you've already got, and we copy it and we paste it over there. And we're complete. And remember when I said to you that it's already got the latest uh, Clover installed because I installed it on my Mac before I got the EFI folder off my Mac partition. So it's all ready to go. If I now restart my computer and press F12 key, boot from USB stick, I can boot from OS X Mojave and we're ready to go. I'm just